One thing that I want to do today to shake things up a little bit is because we're in this lovely movement where it's not just like folks talking to like folks, we talk amongst different economic realms in the cooperative movement and different geographical and societal realms, I want to bring a story uh, from Africa, from some of the work that I did there. So this is a story about Josephine Nabu Yongo. That's as good as I can get with her name. <laughs> and she, like many of us, is just a normal average person. So she takes care of her family. She's a teacher at a local school, St. Joseph's Primary School, where she lives in Uganda. She's involved in her community. She serves on the board of her credit union. And moving into the realm of where courageous leadership meets Josephine, um, context is really important. So Josephine lives in a societal context where people challenge the idea that women can be leaders. They look for things that women leaders are doing wrong before they're looking for what women leaders can do right. In the context of the political situation in the US, you may know what those kind of dialogues sound like too. Um, and she's, she's in a space where a lot of people are really looking for um, you know, people to prove themselves that they're a woman. There's not an assumption there. There's not a generous environment necessarily. And so Josephine, being a courageous leader, um, in 2014, she ran for the chair of the board for the African, Pan-African Credit Union Association, the Association uh, for Cooperative Savings and Credit Associations, and, or the, yes, Confederation it's called. And in that context, there were a lot of people that really doubted her leadership ability. And uh, <coughs> Josephine stood proud because she had something bigger than just what she looked like or what she was doing or people criticizing her and what she was capable of. She really saw an opportunity to transform Africa. So poverty wasn't a day-to-day -day concern for people. And she saw credit unions as being a critical part of that. Uh, financial cooperatives, people getting out of poverty, starting savings clubs, youth getting out of a cycle of poverty and being able to build in their communities, be entrepreneurs, um, you know, share savings, do micro lending, that type of thing. And so she saw that as this wonderful path forward. So she wanted to be part of leading that change to enable and empower folks across Africa uh, from dozens of different countries that are involved with that confederation to be able to do better work and reach more people, have more members, make more impact. And so she decided she would run even though the context wasn't friendly. And in 2014, she was in fact elected to uh, that position as chair of that Pan-African Confederation. And when she was doing her speech, as she accepted, um, she said, the ceiling is, or sorry, the sky is not our ceiling, it's our floor. We have work to do. And so really she's the kind of person that brings that vision first and then the work comes to follow. But she's really great in enrolling people in that vision. Because if you just start at what a mess we all have to work with, the list that you all have to go back to after the weekend, right? It's really easy to be in the nitty gritty and not have that vision. So soon enough, your world gets really small. But she starts with the vision and then leads from that space. And um, one of the things I think is important in this context of courageous leadership with Josephine is uh, the other folks that enable courageous leadership around her. So there were a lot of naysayers there, of course, but there were a number of people that had it be so that she could take on that leadership position. And so a couple people to name them, one, George Ambardo, he's the executive director for that association, a young guy. So, you know, being young as well as being a woman is sometimes judged a little bit differently in the African context as well. Um, so he really had a lot ahead of him in terms of being able to shine as a leader. But he would constantly have conversations about looking at gender equality, um, looking at getting youth involved, looking at the changing dynamics of leadership and the opportunity and what we really need to do to shift our current conversation. Um, and as well, Dr. Halongwen, who is a, uh, the former chair of that association. And I love it because his first name is Doctor. He's not a doctor. <laughs> his mother named him Doctor because she wanted him to be distinguished, which I think is brilliant. And we should all take that. Um, but he also was part of those conversations. And it's, it's almost like them saying, I'm willing to relinquish what is automatically mine, a leadership position, status in the community, because I see an opportunity for more people to get involved and bring their energy forward. So those two people partnered with the Canadian Co-op Association, which is your sort of counterpart to the National Cooperative Business Association, NCBA CLUSA here in the States. And I was working with them at the time. And they said, we'd love for you to come and do our governance training this year. And so, that was back in 2012, and I said, okay, this could be a good challenge. You know, financial leaders across Africa coming in for, you know, top-notch uh, governance training, and, and I'm going to be leading it. Okay, this is interesting. This could be really neat. 
So first of all, I've, I've got a few hits against me in terms of people criticizing what I might potentially bring forward. I'm young, I'm a woman, and I'm a woman in a leadership position, which is a little bit strange for some people. I was serving on the board of my credit union in Ottawa, Ontario at the time, and also serving as manager of research and education for the Canadian Cooperative Association. So I came in and I was setting up things just like folks were setting up here this morning, you know, putting things on tables, charts on walls, and someone came in early and they said, uh, who's, who's leading our training today? I'd like to meet them. And I said, oh, that's me. Nice to meet you. You know, what do you do? Oh, you know, immediately, very first person, really interesting context to start the day. And the next person that walked in, he went up to him and he said, this girl's leading our training today, you know, really skeptical about it. And so in that context, I thought, well, I've got work ahead of me. But the great thing is because we continue to sort of force these conversa conversations in a way where they're not always even invited, but we do it in a way where we bring people with us, we don't leave them behind, then we're able to challenge the status quo and make space for people like Josephine to be an incredible leader. Well, really, that vision that's driving her, that allows her to be resilient to all of the naysayers and all the people that don't believe in what, in what she's doing and what she's bringing forward, um, those people are also in this movement of courageous leadership too. So even if we're not the face of courageous leadership, we get to be the space where it happens and the enabling support where that happens. So those are the two things really that I hope that you get out today is that have a vision so big that it makes you get up in the morning ready to do all the hard work to get there, really be up to something. And the second is around even if you're not the face of it, you get to be a space where courageous leadership happens. So I leave that with you today and I thank you for your time.